Well, I mean, it's like an oxymoron. You I mean, know I'm what? Okay. It's like anything else. You have to I'm sort right. of follow the money. You have to follow the money. The legislature. And this is, and this is what's key. You could jump in. What's key is that you have to have somebody who's going to be in the office who is a skilled negotiator, who is not afraid of the legislatures, not afraid of the leaders in the health care industry. And as uh, a representative in the Attorney General's office who's negotiated deals on behalf of all the civil agencies, uh, there's no doubt that there's no one that is going to intimidate me on the other side of the table. Let's, let's so the proper here. questions need to be asked. Good, good. Attorney General Biden and I fought against this affiliation and the amendment of the law. The law was amended the last week of session about as quick as I've ever seen a bill go through committee to the floor. The fact of the matter is that, that this commissioner announced her support for this merger before a hearing officer was even appointed. Hmm. Matt then appointed hearing officers, had fact-finding, read the reports, and then made a decision. And what happened with Blue Cross Blue Shield of Delaware and Highmark is easily to predict. Hmm. Go to West Virginia. I have spoken in the last two weeks with the person who was a deputy insurance commissioner and the chief financial examiner at Blue, at Blue Mountain Blue Cross when that merger there started, and the same thing that Bo Biden and I predicted would happen here, happened in West so Virginia. So you're saying you think it's a bad deal for us? It's a bad deal. The reserves will be taken away, the rates are going to go up, the majority that the company holds will go into a turn wow. into a monopoly, and, and the, the reserves will be drained, paying multi-millions of dollars to Highmark to, for the computer system access. That's exactly what's been predicted. That's what happened in West Virginia. Wow. Now, Commissioner Stewart protected everything for four years, but as you and I know, and we all know, four years passes quickly, and then the jobs are gone, we have a super monopoly, and there's no competition gotta, in the state. Uh, before you come, I'll Karen, you've got to let you respond to this. Right. I mean, this um, is like some serious stuff going on here. My opponents are painting the exact wrong picture. In fact, Commissioner Klein, who was the insurance commissioner in mm -hmm. West Virginia, raves about what happened with um, Blue Mountain and Highmark. Uh, there was no merger. It was an affiliation, which Mr. Crane did appropriately um, say an affiliation. An affiliation is not an ownership. Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Delaware is a Delaware company. The board is controlled by Delaware. The majority of the board members are picked by Blue Cross and Blue Shield of Delaware. Um, Highmark will have some board members in. There was 49 conditions that I put on. Um, some of it is for reductions of premiums over the next 10 years. Mm. I've also put in provisions for children to receive funding for the CHIPS program so they can go up to 300% of poverty level. Um, I also put in, because last time when we had an affiliation with or merger with Care First, it was very hard to dismantle right. it. I put very clear guidelines in to dismantle so, so the, the this. So the bottom line is, because I'm going to get everyone in, you think it, it's a good deal for the state? It's a very good deal for the state and, of Delaware. And, you and think, I did not endorse it before I received all the reports. I said I knew something needed to be done, and I was happy that there was something that was a non-profit situation as opposed to a for-profit situation. Paul? No, Norm, I believe in the boots on the ground, and I went to the Delaware State Fair this past week, and I stopped by the Highmark truck mm -hmm. parked on the fairgrounds, and I visited with all the people there, and very nice people. However, not one person there working at that truck was from Delaware. Wow. They were all from Pennsylvania. That's what it says, it's a Pennsylvania company. Well, 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 what does this do? I mean, will we lose jobs? I mean, like, I'm sure some people from Blue Cross are watching this show. I'm sure they're going to call in when we open the um, phone lines up. Will we lose jobs? Will no. some folks lose jobs? No. Actually, the 600 jobs have been protected, and Blue Cross and Blue Shield is hiring two more, 200 more people right okay. at the moment. The jobs are by the commissioner's order are protected for four years. They need to report to her if they're going to lay people off, but my people have been canvassing in the Wilmington area for the last month, and we've met Blue Cross workers who have been laid off. And if it's an affiliation, that's great, but the sign now say, it says Highmark BC. BD. Ladies and gentlemen, you know, I hope, I hope, one second, hope you're enjoying the show. Call all your friends, make sure um, we're going to, this is live. I mean, this is like incredible stuff. Um, we're talking about some stuff I didn't even know. Um, and I hope you're appreciating, I mean, the insurance commissioners, because we're going to start talking about some insurance premiums. I mean, how can people, how can we save the ordinary person? How can either you, 
I mean, in, in one minute, how can you, Dennis, how can you, Paul, or how can you save the ordinary per person some money? I mean, I think my, my insurance is way too damn high. I'm You're sorry. right. Well, can, can I just make a comment real quickly on the merger? You can make a real quick comment and didn't answer that question. Okay, okay. about the merger, sure. I think what the point is that everybody is missing is the bigger picture. The bigger picture is that consolidation is happening in the healthcare field just as it's happened in the banking uh, and the finance area. So we have to be cognizant of that trend. And what we have to do is try and control it as best we can. That means leveling the playing field by having more regulars, regulators. That means ensuring that we maintain independent uh, pharmacies, independent dentists, independent uh, doctor groups. That's one of the ways uh, we approach it. And things are only going to become more complex once we try to mesh the Affordable Care Act with the uh, state, existing state programs. Now, to the question that Norm was talking about, the one, the one issue that everybody address, that does not address, is the issue of personal responsibility. The office is only being used one one millionth of its capability. I'm already working uh, with uh, someone so that I can bring an out, a number of people, so I can bring outreach to the community. The people who need the services the most are the ones who are not going to go on a website. Uh, and so I have to go into the churches. And what we'll do is we'll also stress a health and nutrition program. And I'm doing that already. I'm working on such a program. Let's attack the underlying causes of uh, obesity, diabetes. Let's get them early. And once you have those facts, if we can say to the insurance companies, we have lost a million pounds in this state. We have a gym in every private hey, Dennis, and public facility. I don't want to cut you off, but I got to, okay. because we're going to have That's, phone calls. Th those are the facts that we then present uh, as facts Paul? to uh, minimize the premium. Yeah, let's, go ahead. I'm sorry, go ahead. You want to answer the question? I was like, how can we bring some of the premiums down? Well, Norm, I just think, I, I think insurance is too doggone high. What, is, what has happened in, in the past uh, 10 years in the state is we've had more insurance companies leave the state than have come into the state. And I'm talking auto and homeowner insurance policies. Okay. Uh, granted, we have a lot of companies that have come in and got licensed here. It's a good state to be licensed in for tax reasons. However, the market out there right now, there's probably only about 15 insurance companies that are actually writing auto insurance in the state of Delaware, believe it or not. Hmm. And it, 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 it's unbelievable that when they want a rate increase, they'll go, to, they'll get, they'll go to, down to the commissioner's office and this has been going on for years, not just under Karen's administration. They go down and they ask for a 20% rate increase. They end up with a 10, 10% rate increase. When they wanted a 10% rate increase to begin with, that's what they wanted. So if somebody has to say no when they want a rate increase, mm -hmm. research it and find out, do they really need a rate increase? Right. In my opinion, over the years, a lot of the rate increases were totally unjustified. Okay, Karen, if you real, real quickly, you, you got your mic on. Oh, that's right. Um, first off, um, Dennis is right. There are a lot of consoli consolidations going on, like with banking, with some of the big insurance companies, and with the Affordable Care Act, I see that there will probably be more consolidation because the small insurance companies aren't going to be able to compete. And this was one of the reasons that led up to the affiliation of Blue Cross and Blue Shield and Highmark, because Blue Cross and Blue Shield has old computer systems, the old legend computer, set, um, computer platforms, and cannot um, implement the Affordable Care Act, which is something that was new on the plate that wasn't on the plate prior to 2008 or 2009. Um, as far as rates are concerned, rates are submitted to my office. We have a an outside actuarial firm that goes over the rates to make sure that they're justifiable. Mm -hmm. And we actually have rolled out transparency on our website where you can look at the rates that are being submitted by the insurance companies, mm -hmm. what the actuarial firms feel is um, justifiable in these rates. They're mm -hmm. looked at and scrutinized. And then what if I've been able to get a lower rate? For instance, in health insurance, I saved Delawareans $1.1 million in their premium last year okay. since I've been given the authority to approve and disapprove rate increase in health 
insurance, which we put the bill into the legislature a couple years Let's ago. Let's get Mitch to answer it, and then I might ask one more question, then we're going to open up the phone lines, if that's okay. Well, I wrote the bill for, the, for this commissioner in 2009 to give her the authority to approve or disapprove health insurance rate increases, and until this year she approved every one of them, and that, that's, <laughs> forgot the half about disapproving, and Matt then often disapproved rate increases. The, the reason why rates are going up so high is the lack of competition. I know people in Sussex County where I live hmm. who are retired federal government workers who want to buy and move to the beach area right. but can't do so because their federal health insurance is under Humana and four of the top five health insurance companies in the United States do not write in Delaware. Now one reason for that is we don't go out and recruit new companies to come in and write health insurance and number two, this high mark affiliation or merger, affiliation means you pay something, merger means you don't have to, is keeping more competition out because they're creating a super monopoly. And oh. how do you compete against a company which is out of state, has multi, multi hundreds of millions of dollars, and unlike every other insurance company in the state, doesn't pay premium taxes. We wow. need to level the playing field. Wow. People can't change homeowner's insurance because there's nobody else writing. Mobile home insurance, only one company. Now we have a second. And there's a third one that still writes but won't write new policies. And that's what people pulling out of the beach area. That, and all of, your, all of your listeners know. If your rates have gone up, you've got an issue. And if you haven't, reelect the current commissioner. Um, May, Mr. I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to you one second <laughs> because I, I have to keep it moving because we have so many people on here. Uh, what do you guys think about the Obamacare? And, and Albert, if you could put the number up, I think we should start taking numbers. And if you want to, Karen, when you want to chime in and kind of go back at it, you guys could, you guys could argue with each other. Sure. It's fine with me. Okay. But 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 let, let's let's just, um, I'm gonna. I think a lot of people are confused mm -hmm. about the whole Obamacare stuff. Affordable health care, sir. Af you know, affordable. The enemy health say Obamacare. Yeah, okay. It's affordable Af health care. Affordable Act. health care act. If 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 you could, if you could, if you could, <laughs> sure. if you could tell me like in within a minute. You know, I mean, I know it takes more than a minute because it's like tree, a trillion pages. You know, if you could just put, if you could put in layman's terms so people could understand. The Affordable Health Care Act already, and you can add what I missed. The Affordable Health Care Act already prohibits. See, the phone's ringing already. Prohibits the denial of coverage to children based on pre-existing condition. It already allows parents to keep their children on their automobile insurance to age 26. It already requires coverage of four pre-existing screening conditions for women. That's already in place. It already has cut the donut hole that people on Medicare have with Part D prescription, cut that in half. And in the next two or three years, that'll be eliminated altogether. And what it will eventually do is allow everybody to have insurance by buying into the program and those people who don't have much money for a very small amount of money can buy what used to be called catastrophic coverage. Okay. Those go, things are there. Let's go to Karen and then um, you guys, because I, I got, we, look, the phones are running sure. off the hook. Well, we've been working very hard at my office on the affordable, um, portable health care. Um, the insurance commissioners have been charged with writing all the regulations to put it in place, which we have done. and. We have a timeline that's very tight, and we've been meeting the timelines in Delaware. And also, we have mirrored the Affordable Care Act by putting legislation in the legislature that gives me the authority to regulate this, as opposed to using a federal regulator. Hold and up for a second, then. For uh, we're on the governor's committee for the next big item, which is the exchanges. Working hard on how we're going to implement the exchanges and our timelines. But so far, Delaware has met, we have met all the deadlines, and we have reflected in our legislation the guidelines so that we will be able to, my department okay. will be able to. Paul? Norm, uh, I believe the act, it, it's a starting point. And I believe having a plan is better than not having a plan. Mm -hmm. And we work with it for a few years, two or three years, and anything that's not working can always be repealed. So I think it's a very good starting point, and it does provide, provide coverage and fill a lot of holes for a lot of people that are uncovered right now. So it's very important. Okay. We'll I think the best the one could say it is that it is a starting point. I think the greatest uh, part of the act is the aspirational goal of trying to insure more people. And certainly getting rid of pre-existing conditions is also